thanks for inviting me to this uh, talk. Um, of course, it's kind of a demanding question, what have we learned, because uh, I don't really know what collectively we have learned. I guess I know a little bit of what I have learned. And uh, so this talk, my talk will be a little bit less systematic than, than uh, Ramon's. I will talk a bit about a number, various things. Okay, so uh, what is experimental economics? So you, you know some of this, but let me just uh, use it to introduce it. It's mostly a method, right? So theoretical modeling is a method. Uh, use of econometrics to study observational data is a method. And experiments is just another method. Um, and like the other methods, it has been used to study all kinds of issues, all kinds of issues. Um, and, this, and you can just go out there and read the, the, the journals and you'll see there's a lot of work on all kinds of things, on many topics, some of which you have, would never have thought uh, that one could do an experiment and or may not be even interested. And so I, the last thing I wrote on this is some, something that uh, maybe is not so obvious to everybody, but somehow experimental economics now has a life of its own. So it was a method to do things. It was, of course, therefore related to theory a lot, less so to the uh, study of data. But it was a lot related to theory. But now it, it really has sometimes a lot to do with theory. Other times it doesn't have much to do with theory. It has develop, developed their own dynamics. Some of those things are less attractive to many economists, but others are still quite central. OK, so how are the topics that people study selected? Right? How do you ch choose something? So I guess uh, a lot of people like me, we, you know, you, we use a kind of guerrilla war approach to this. So you just go, you just have some ideas of things that you're interested in, and you try to work on those. But maybe something different comes up that you think is interesting, you have, that you had not worked before on, and that you can do something on it. And, ex and with experiments, you can actually relatively easy get into some topic. As much, it's, it's somehow easier than to do it with the other methods. Now, how do arts topics selected? So here are some typical t ways. I don't know if maybe I should stand like this. Yeah. So one is in relation to theory. And theory, usually economic theory, but it can also be, I don't know, some things from biology or from sociology. Those things can, can be uh, a starting point. Or very often, it's, of course, economic theory. Um, another way it can start is to find out about kind of a theoretical issue of interest. And I'll give an example. So that's something that's not, theory doesn't really say anything about. And so you can, but you can study in the lab because the lab idea and actually the field is just that you have a method to generate data and then you can just basically study those data and talk about this. And whether it's based on theory is secondary in a way. You can also do an, ex an experimental case study, which is a, is a bit like something like uh, study. A, a good example is a market, which is uh, something you're interested in and which can be modeled by the use of some theories, but which uh, may be interesting beyond the theory. It's just an interesting market to study. So then what you study, you could say, is not really the, the model of this market, but you study this market using models, which is not the same, you will see. Um, you can also study things that are hard to theorize. So it may be something that you don't know how to model, right? But you can easily just invent an experiment where there are some agents who do things and there's some interaction mechanism and, and you can just do that and look at it, right? So these are how many topics are selected. These are some ways in which topics are selected. Now, let me be a bit uh, self-serving here and use the opportunity to go some of the things that I've done and it helps also a bit to relate to what I just said. So the first, the, does this work? Yeah, doesn't matter. The first thing on the table, uh, on the screen is this paper on pivotal suppliers and market power in experimental supply function competition. So what is this? Well, is this is a study of a market which is really supposed to be like an electricity market. And the issue is to see the influence of pivotal suppliers. Now, what is a pivotal supplier? Is a company that if it takes away all its uh, capacity from the market, the rest of the suppliers cannot serve the demand, right? And this is a thing that practitioners have studied, right? You don't need, to, you don't need theory to worry about pivotal suppliers. You can actually just invent, and people have done that, an, in, uh, an index of pivotal su pivotalness or pivotal suppliers, and then you can just study it completely empirically by, by looking at whether prices in some electricity markets are higher when, the, uh, this, when this index is higher 
right? But there are also theories about this. There's actually two models. One is a auction model, the other is the supply function equilibrium model. So what we do here is we just represent the market uh, in which, uh, which is a bit like the electricity market. There's pivotal, there are pivotal suppliers. You can look at it completely descriptively, but you, there are also two models which predict different things. And what you do then is you just look at what happens and you relate it to the equilibrium, to the equilibrium of the models. And you also discuss the relation of the data with uh, the, the results in the, in the field with this uh, empirical measure with the index, right? So is this, a, is this a test of theory? No, it's not a test of theory. It's more like the study of a market. And in this case, you actually use theoretical models to understand some of the things. You could do it with the, without the models, but of course, it's always poor, but in this case, we can do it with it, right? So the second uh, thing on the, on the, on the uh, screen is the impact of advice on women's and men's entry into competition. And this, this is kind of a, a thing that came out, or this is a line of research into to which we have done something uh, that came out of experimental economics. And that is the possibility to check in the lab what the attitude of men and women is towards competition. And there are some really uh, very influential papers that, fundament that most importantly show that women tend to shy away from competition. So there's a, think of it, there's a kind of task and you can do the task being paid piece rate, you can, be, you can do, do the task under tournament incentives. And if you just have men and women in these situations, men and women do as, just as well whether it's paid, paid piece rate or whether it's paid uh, tournament-wise. But if, on the other hand, you just let women choose whether they want to choose, whether they want to go, is this too, uh, bad? So, so okay. I have to run this. Sorry, I'm for, for Like this? Okay. So if you, if you, on the other hand, let women choose whether they want to uh, use, be paid by piece rate or paid by tournament incentives, women and actually that's the important thing, capable women, women who are good at the task, tend to shy away from it and, and choose peace rate, although they would be earning more if they went into the tournament, right? So this is actually a discovery that is atheoretical. There's no theory about this. Maybe you can invoke some evolutionary biology, right? Men are selected to compete, maybe, you know, I don't know. Uh, but there's no theory in the sense that economists think of it. But it evolved out of experimental economics, and then we just did one experiment which uh, checks whether advice giving checks whether advice giving to women can actually correct for this. And there's other ways to correct for this. And since I may be uh, talking too much, the, the two, two second, uh, third and fourth paper do something, uh, what it, they have in common is something that I think is also a special thing of uh, lab experiments, and that is that they uh, involve the study of communication. If you think of it in, in economic theory, communication is not very prominent. There are, of course, game theoretic models involving communication, right? But it, it's communication in a very, very specific way. It's strategic communication. It's the effect of what that could be on the, on the interaction of players in a game theoretic uh, context. And of course, that's an important case. But communication actually takes place all the time in the economy, in the society, about whatever, about all kinds of things. Now, the lab, and in this case the field, I think a little bit less, is a way in which you can study this systematically because you can have interaction of different types allowing for communication and without allowing for com communication. And you can actually then also study the communication that takes place and you can try to figure out which kind of, which kind of communication policy or which kind of things you, that you say have this or this other effect, right? So these are examples, right? And I guess I wanted to give them a part from you uh, telling you that we do this is also to give you a feel for the fact that we do quite different things, right? And, and some of this is connected to theory quite strongly, others is not at all, right? Now, uh, the advantage of using experiments is something that I may go quickly because this is like a bit like something we'll repeat all the time, so you may know this. So control, uh, you know, 
what are the conditions under which th uh, interaction takes place. You don't know it 100%, right? But you know because you don't know what's in the head of people. But you know quite you know more than in other contexts than in con in non-experimental contexts. Replication, you can redo it. Actually, a lot of uh, the a lot of the uh, controversies and experimental uh, work is are settled by replication or non-replication. They're not settled by redoing the analysis uh, and saying, oh, the analysis was not correct, now I did it better. That, it also happens, so there are cases where this has happened. But most often is if you have a result that sounds interesting but strange, then I can just go and do it again, and that's how it's often done. Right? Replication uh, is important, and let me just say something here. Lab is easy to replicate, field is hard to replicate, right? If somebody did an experiment in Kenya financed by the World Bank and I don't believe it, there's not much I can do, right? Because I cannot go myself there because I don't have the finance, right? On the other hand, lab experiments are cheaper, so it's easier to do. Causality, well, we, we like to insist that different treatments are introduced exogenously, which is something that is so to, to um, you know, causality without Experimental control is much harder. Now, we are also aware that the econometricians have very smart ways of getting at trying to figure out causality. So we're not claiming that uh, we only we do it better than anybody, but it is something we can do. And I think the last thing is highly interdisciplinary. Maybe I'll leave this for discussion later. We, we have probably more relation to uh, psychologists and uh, sociologists and people like this than uh, theoretical economists. Okay. Oh, I should have done this bigger, but... Yeah. So, <laughs> this one minute, okay. I did this slide with Rosie, uh, the, uh, and then I edited it a bit. Uh, so, frequently asked questions and criticisms. Well, uh, there are some famous ones, and maybe let me go to the famous ones. One is, of course, the subject pool critique, right? So, we do student, we use student subjects almost always, right? Uh, now, what can we say about this? Well. First, uh, it's just not so easy to have other student subjects, other subjects. We have done recently an experiment on electricity and we have had the possibility to go to the market in Madrid, the Iberian market. But then you get into something which, of course, the people who always suggest you should get experts don't think about, which is sample size. So you say, I, I want some subjects to, who are experts in the market. Can you get them to me? They say, yeah, sure, we can. And then they get you 10. Right? And that's fine, you have then 10 experts, but somehow statistically you cannot do much with it. It's basically descriptive and it's interesting to do. But So that's one thing I wanted to say about this. The other is, of course, that whether experts do better than students or different than students is an empirical question. And I think this should, I mean, this is really, really like a message, right? It is a good, it is a very natural objection, but we have to check it out whether it's true. And actually, there's the survey by Colin Kammerer where he, um, uh, no, sorry, by Frechette, where he took, where he looks at all the experiments that have been done both with students and with, uh, with experts. And of course, there's all kinds of cases, right? But overall, the message seems to be there are no such big differences. Now, why this is a mystery that we can really discuss. The other is, uh, let me just mention that, field experiments versus labs. So field is very popular, uh, last thing, huh? field is very popular, and you know, I also want to go to Kenya or some, one of these places if possible. But uh, of course, uh, there, are, uh, there are problems of control, of financing, so I don't know, the lab has some advantages. And now the most important message about this, again, whether the field will yield different results than the lab is an empirical question. It sounds very intuitive. It will be different, but we have to check it out, and we don't know. And Kammerer has a survey where he looks at all the experiments where you have really done the same in the field in the lab, and the differences are not so big, right? So uh, I guess uh, the field versus the lab should not, be a con should not be a war, but should be a... a uh, a cooperation is a two different ways of doing things. Sometimes one thing is the better, sometimes the other. So, you know, let's cooperate, but let's not just try to drive others out, like sometimes this uh, uh, may, may seem to be happening. So, um, yeah, so that maybe I, I just answer, I just finish with what I have at the end. The list is longer. I, I don't have time to go into more. 
There are more objections than the ones that I just brought up, and maybe we can discuss them later. But I think uh, one should see them as concerns that are important, and let I me mean, say that the experimentalists are aware of this. But you shouldn't see them as killer objections, like you say, oh, it's not with experts, so I don't want to look at it. I, that, I think, is not rational, really. Uh, so the relevance of, of many of these uh, objections is an empirical matter. One has to check it out. It makes sense, but maybe it's not true. So, And I had more stuff, but maybe we can discuss later.